Praise the Lord, Facebook. Praise the Lord. Many viewers out there throughout the nation, throughout the world, whatsoever you are watching. Uh, this is Minister Williams signing on once again. I want to bring you a word this afternoon. I'm titling this, The Way of God. The Way of God. God has a way that we can't get over. God has a way that we can't go under. You must come in through the door. He is, say, He is the door. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. There ain't many viewers throughout the Facebook uh, viewing audience uh, via um, Facebook, um, YouTube, whatsoever media uh, resources you use to view the program. We desire that the Word of God bless you in your uh, many entities of life, the many avenues where you would apply the Word of God. Well, praise God. Uh, the way the uh, the way of God. I desire this uh, word be clarity to you that you may um, understand. God has a way. God has a simple way. Uh, the way is so simple that it confines the wise and so complex that even the very um, uh, the the very uh, babes can understand it, which is so simple, but yet. It's so uh, simple that the, the, the wise is just confusion to them because it, it don't make sense. You know, the Bible says that the word is spiritually and it's spiritually discerned. So we desire that we uh, look into the word of God by his spirit, via the way of the spirit, that we may see and understand and perceive in the spirit the things which God is speaking to us. Well, praise the Lord. I desire to uh, go ahead and render the word to get into the message of God that you may receive of him the bread of life. Um, Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, this afternoon. Father, homeless we are, uh, know how, asking that you consecrate us, Father. Cleanse us, wash us abroad, Father, that we may, that these words, are, 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 these lips of claim and speak your word, your truth, and to the many listening ears that they may receive your word, hear of you, the things which your messages you lay unto the people in this hour, and that we may, they may receive and eat of you the bread of life, that our spirit man may be fed and nurtured in the things of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I desire to come to you, first of all, from the book of John. King James Version is the uh, book which I desire to render you the word from. And this word uh, coming from, from uh, to you from a common um, passage in which we use today, and it's uh, John 14, uh, the first uh, verse in John 14, which is uh, which reads, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus state this thing, uh, a land to us, that in life there shall be many trials, there should be many tribulations, there should be uh, so uh, many um tests in life and jesus said unto us in john 14 and 6 he said uh i am the way the truth and the life no man come to the father but by me so jesus uh said in john 11 and 25 that he said unto uh mary that he is the resurrection and the life and he that they believe in in him um, they shall live and not die. Well, my friend, I come to ask you, you know, do you know, do you desire to know this person? Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. And he asked uh, the question, do she believe? He asked Mary, do you believe this? Believe in this, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. In other words, he had, he is the life. He created a way that, um, we should not uh, try to uh, get beyond the means of uh, the path in which, y'all yeah, pardon me for I would drop my ink pen here and I desire to uh, make sure I um, render the full scripture to you, uh, full message in which I laid here. So uh, he said that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and he desired that if a man come to know life or come to uh, experience life now remember life is just not the breathing and heartbeat jesus said he is life so let's separate the two that uh just because a person is alive naturally 
They may be die alive naturally, but dead spiritually. That is dead Godward. So they may be alive manward towards mankind, but they, they are dead spiritually. That is Godward. They are dead uh, in the spiritual realm. And we know that the things in the spirit realm are the true or are the true essence of life. They are the, the true life because uh, that, that which liveth in the spirit shall not die. Okay, so uh, Galatians 1 and 4, Jesus said, uh, is speaking, it said, who gave himself, Jesus gave himself for our sins that we might be delivered from the present evil of this world according to the world. So what, what this lets me know is that in this world, we're going to have all kinds of temptations. We're going to have all kinds of troubles. We're going to have all kinds of evil that presents itself to come to try to tempt us, to come to try to afflict us, to come to try to just detour our way. But he said, the Bible says here in Galatians 1 and 4, that Jesus gave himself, the person gave himself, that we might be delivered from this present evil. Now, he didn't say, it, it doesn't mean that he come that you be exempt from these are uh, trials that you be exempt from troubles that your life once you're born again you're exempt from all kinds of temptations or any kind of things that you would go through but it means that he has given you a way of escape or he has given you a way to bear these situations in other words god the bible tells us that god don't put more on us than what we're able to bear so just as the morning scripture came forward this morning in this morning's message, uh, which the pastor rendered, she said that uh, God don't put anything more on us than what we're able to bear. And in laying this, she said that in, 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 mean, in meaning that um, if you go through a situation, certainly God has already seen you through your trial or your test or the thing in which you are going through or that you're going to go through. So if you're going to go through a particular situation, God has already foreseen you through it. And if God has already foreseen you through a particular situation or through a particular trial or through a particular test, then shouldn't we already know that we have the victory in that test, that we already had the victory in that battle? And if we believe that, just as he said, he asked Mary, do you believe that I am the way? Do you believe that I am the truth? Do you believe that I am the life? If you believe that, then your life, should you should praise God with your actions. In other words, your actions should line up with your heart, with your mind. Your, your whole body should come in line with the believing of the word that you believe the report of the Lord that he has delivered, that he's, he, that he's capable of delivering, that he has delivered you through your present trials. So when your present trials or your present tests for some reason, when we go through things, the flesh is quickly the flesh is quickly to get discouraged. The, the flesh is quickly to begin to look at this present situation that we are going through, as if the situation has the victory already in the test, in spite of what Jesus has already spoken, in spite of the promises in which He's already said. So, if He's not going to put more on us than what we're able to bear, certainly we already had the victory. In our current situations Romans 3 Romans 3 and 22 it says the righteousness of God which is by faith through Jesus Christ unto all of them that believe the question once again is do you believe is thou this do you believe it that God's righteousness has been transferred to those that believe do you believe that God's uh, uh, Holiness and his grace is able to keep you. Do you believe that God's comfort is able to comfort you in those uh, life uh, bearing situations? We know we have some things that are in life that is so devastating that, you know, you just don't want to uh, press on. But we have this hope in Christ Jesus that if we have uh, others who have died, who have uh, uh, rested or went to sleep, we don't uh, necessarily say they die. But the Bible refer, uh, refers to this as a type of sleep. And just as when Jesus went to uh, the, uh, 
the 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 little girl that had died he said um you know uh 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 arise and awake and the bible says she regained her strength she she come from uh her natural uh state uh which would seem to be to us in the natural realm as death and she awoke so we shall all sleep we we may the bible said we 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 shall not all sleep but if we do sleep we shall arise at the sound of the trump when the when the trump sound at the sound of an archangel he when that when that trump sound and it sounds as at the as it sounds identical to the call of an archangel we shall all rise we shall all get up and the dead in christ those who are already dead those who are arrested should they uh you know they should not um they you know they're going to rise first good evening auntie good to see your own praise lord um good to be in the land of the living praise god and the Bible says that, you know, this righteousness that God give us by faith to all that believe, you know, the question once again, do we believe that we have that we have attained this righteousness? Do we believe that, you know, uh, that the righteousness, God's righteousness is able to keep us, is able to cover us, is able to guard the hearts and minds of those that rest in, in Christ Jesus? You know, just because you go through a, a particular situation, saint. That don't mean that God don't love you. That don't mean that God has forgotten about you. That don't mean that you're in God's favor and in God's uh, out of God's protection. You know, the Bible says that if Jesus went through trials, how much more of us? In other words, we are able to go through because God went through. And we shouldn't think that we are greater than Jesus, that trials shouldn't come our way. You know, if Jesus went through trials, we should be able to go through trials. So the Bible says in Romans 3, and 23 that we are all that everybody has sinned and fallen short of the glory of god we are all uh been saved by the same grace by the same grace of god how we've been saved and it, but the bible tells us also being justified in other words we're justified by that blood sacrifice in which jesus did that blood the bible says it's speaking greater things than it, that are able and, and 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 it used to be a song that we sang about the blood. We talked about how the power and how it would never lose its power, you know, and how it reaches to the highest mountain and how it touches the lowest valley. We used to sing great songs about that blood that reminded us that that blood has a, a everlasting atoning power that is able to keep all that we receive of it, the grace of God, hallelujah, is able to keep us, keep us from falling, keep us pure, keep us clean, keep us sanctified, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ. It says, by being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, hallelujah. We have our redemption in him, praise God, hallelujah. We are, we are justified just as if we had never sinned because of we accepted it that atoning grace that atoning blood sacrifice which jesus gave now that don't mean that we all we don't have flaws because the bible says that we have flaws we we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god but god but the blood of god that blood of god is able to cleanse us if we ask to him we we, we receive of that righteousness he's able to wash us and the Bible says that if we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and then we ask ourselves, well, who can be saved? And uh, that very question was asked in Luke uh, 18 and 26. After they heard the word, they said, who can be saved then? And the Bible says in Romans 6 and 1, praise God, hallelujah. Uh, we shall, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And this goes back to that. Uh, well, I was talking about that uh, bloodshed, that blood of Christ that uh, it says, you know, where grace did abound and uh, it said where grace did abound, uh, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. So in other words, your sin, your sin in the, in the, in the past, your sin in the present, your future sin is all under the blood of Christ. If you have accepted Christ Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, that blood covers or it atones it, it covers all your sin it's like having a a, a a lawyer or attorney in the court of law that's able to stand before you 
and defend the, the things that you have done when you know him that the blood of the blood of Jesus is your advocate, your lawyer, and is speaking on your behalf to the judge, which is on the throne of grace, and that's the Father. So Jesus, the Son, when he sees the bloodshed of the Son, he says not guilty because that bloodshed covers our sin. Does that mean that we are perfect? No, we're going to have flaws, but we're perfect in Christ Jesus. I oh, bless you, Brother Powell. Good to see y'all on watching this afternoon. It says, uh, John, 1 John, uh, uh, 1 John 3 and 9, it says, Whosoever is born of God do not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, for he is born of God. So that righteous seed that is in us, you know, since there was no sin in God, there could be no sin in those who accept God to be the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, that don't mean that we are, we are without fault or without, we are without shortcoming. It just means that when you fall short, your, your blood, your, your, your sins and your actions are covered under the blood of Christ. So we look there, there here, here at my third point, and it says, furthermore, uh, Paul says he beseech us and he exhort us by the Lord Jesus Christ that, that we receive or how we ought to walk to please God. That every man uh, to please God so that we would abound more and more. We don't trample over this grace. We don't just trample over God. Or this is not a license to sin because we have received salvation. That don't mean that we just go out and see how far, how much uh, sin can we do. Uh, 1 John 3 and 3. For every man that hath this hope purify himself, even as Christ Jesus is pure. In Galatians 6 and 1 it says, brother. If any man fall, though, if any man uh, uh, make a mistake and, 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 and fall short of the glory of God, if any man is overtaken on a fault, it says, ye who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. So this means that we are capable of falling, people. We are capable uh, when you don't uh, make a goal or you don't set out to sin. Or you, you may fall in temptation. You may fall short of God's glory in some way, somehow. But this doesn't mean that the Bible says that ye who are spiritual. And the reason it says ye who are spiritual, because this lets me know that everybody is not going to be uh, walking in the spirit. They may be in the body of Christ, but they may not be walking in the spirit. So that lets me know that there are a type of people who are spiritual, who's able to restore. They have the love and the compassion of God, who's able to console those. See, a lot of times you have people in the church, when people fall, we're ready to pick up stones and stone them. We're ready co to condemn them. But the Bible says, let, it says right here, it says, if any man is overtaken in a fault, ye who are spiritual, restore such a one uh, with the spirit of meekness. This is the key, key part right here, with the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So how you can uh, passionately give out that love and compassion to those who may have fallen, to those who may have got tripped up in something. With that same love and compassion, God will handle you when you fall short. See, you got to look at it like this. If, if we are the body, and we are the body of Christ, if you stump your toe, your hand gets involved with that situation. If your toe hurts, immediately both hands go down to console that toe. You know, that other leg starts to jumping up and down, you know, showing the affectionate of how it's joined together. Your mouth screams out and say, ow. That mouth gets involved, and then those eyes may show as, uh, as a type of excitement where they open up, feeling the pain, that, that toe. Now, the, the mouth is not the toe. The hands are not the toe. Neither are the arms and legs. But all come in, and they console that toe to bring comfort to that toe. Even so, the more we who are in the body will those who have fallen. Now, I'm not saying those who practice sin, but I'm showing you that those who fall short, who have been overtaken in some type of fault. We show that restoration in love, bringing them back, restoring them to the fullness of love, having a compassion lest we ourselves be tempted. You know, when we uh, point the finger at those who fall, we say that we have everything in our life under control or we have the power over our life. See, you got to understand that this walk right here, we need the same grace and the same mercy, even as that sinner who's out there, because there was one point in your life 
when you didn't know God. And God wasn't throwing stones, and yet he wasn't throwing the hurling uh, accusations and things at us. But with that love and compassion, people, he brought you to salvation. With that love and compassion, he brought you into the knowledge of Christ. Jude said, Jude um, 1 and 22, it says, and some having compassion. See, that goes back to that same compassion. Well, I say is that, you know, the church should be able to show, you know, those these people don't know the way. So with us being that we know the way, sometimes we forget that it takes love and compassion for us to bring them in. And once they know how to do different, then they can do different. But they come in this way because they don't know any difference. And yet, you know, we have a type of uh, thing where we desire to see people right overnight, a microwave right. Well, your righteousness was not over right. As a matter of fact, God is still working on you. And if he was finished with you, you would be called, you would, you would have been called up or called up to be with him. When you are that finished product, but since you are still here, God is still working on you. God still has a work for your life. Now, that don't mean that you uh, get uh, discouraged because you have some things, but you work out your own soul, soul, your own soul salvation with fear and trembling, knowing that we need the same compassion, the same grace of God to just render that mercy unto us as we render mercy unto others. We, we pray a, a prayer where we say, Lord, give us this day our daily bread and give us that love and compassion. Give us that same mercy as we render mercy unto others. I'm just paraphrasing or breaking it down, but we say, lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Give us that same bread, that same compassion, that bread of life, as you have fed us your mercy, as you have fed, uh, fed us your compassion, your grace. Give us that, that the eyes, see people, we need to be able to walk in meekness. As the message came forward today, we need to take the love of God with us everywhere. The reason why the world can't see God is because we are spiritual while we're in the church. But when we go out from the church, we forget that we need to be just as much uh, praising God and just as much the people of God, wheresoever we are. Your workplace should not oversell the grace of God. In other words, that man in, 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 the, uh, in your workplace, when he say, oh, you can't bring that in here. Well, you're saying that we don't need God in the workplace. We need God everywhere we go. If the Congress would bring the, uh, God to the uh, workplace, if, if the church, if the supermarket, then the world would be a different place if we could see God. We are a work in progress. Yes, indeed, Sister Val, those are your exact words. We are a work in progress. Bless you, Pastor Val. Good to see you on this afternoon. And we all have issues. We all have flaws once again. But what Jude said, and some, there are going to be some of us who is not going to forget that we have that compassion because we realize that this work of God is going to take us having humility. We must all humble ourselves knowing that we need God. We need God to make it in. We can't make it. We can't do this walk without God. Hallelujah. We need grace. We need his compassion. We need his love. We need this to be rendered in our life daily, that our words be seasoned with love, that our hearts be seasoned with love, that our mind be seasoned with love. And we can't be so easily tempted to just so, to show frustration. If we show this frustration and we allow, allow this stuff to come out of us, we would be like Moses where we, mis, we misrepresent God. Y'all, I want to relay this message. I'm, I'm excited about it. And the Bible says the Jew and says some and others say with fear, pulling them out of the fires, those fiery trials, pulling them out of the fires, hating even the very garment. See, your righteousness can be stained. And this is Revelations 19 and 8. And it says, and to her was granted that she, she, she should be arrayed and fine white linen. For the, the fine white linen or the clean white linen is the righteous the righteousness of the saints or the righteous acts of the saints. When you are able to show righteous acts, when you're able to show righteous deeds, then the world can see your God. They can see your God through you. They can see your God living through your love and through your compassion. They're able to see our God. So when the world can't see our God, that means that somehow we are maybe raised up 
and maybe in titles. Listen, a title don't save you. Titles don't make us uh, uh, saved. Uh, uh, titles don't uh, bring salvation. They just show that we are servants, that we have a type of servitude. And it show, may show the degree of servitude, praise God. But uh, uh, we need the love of God. We need to be able to show that same compassion just as God has rendered to us, to every man, regardless of his, his, his fall, regardless of how short he fall, because we all need the love and the mercy of God. And if we may show these people, I believe, I believe that the world may begin to uh, see our God and begin to see when we when we're able to show them our God, they can see their own errors. They can see, see their own faults and their shortfalls. But if we we if we are coming to them as if we don't have any issues of our own and that everybody's up on this high pedestal, this high place, knowing without a shadow of a doubt that you need the God, the, the grace of God to make it in, then we misrepresented God. People, we need to humble ourselves. We need to come off of these high places that people may see God, that others may see the God in us, praise God, hallelujah, and come to him asking what must we do to be saved? What must we do to be changed? What must we do to know the same love that God has rendered to you, or rendered to every man? Hallelujah. We need this. People, I pray that something was said, that we examine ourselves, hallelujah, under the high hand of Christ Jesus, knowing that we should walk this love, walk humbly. Let us learn to humbly love people. Let us learn not to so quickly be ready to judge people. Because let me tell you something. I'm trying to close. You weren't where you were yesterday. You weren't where you were uh, years ago. And God has rendered some mercy to you. So remember where you were and remember how God has dealt with you. And then how you how God has dealt with you, you try to deal with others the same way. Let us keep that at, in, at our heart. If we could keep that at our key focus and keep that at our key heart, maybe the church will uh, show the love and compassion as we roll out the carpet, hallelujah, to welcome many uh, people who desire to come to this hospital to receive the same healing, the same mercy, to know the same God as you have come to love and come to know. Because, you know, truly you could say when you came to know him that you have come to love him. God's ways are just beautiful. Bless you, uh, Sister Nikki. Bless you, uh, nephew, as y'all uh, come on uh, the viewing of, the, of this uh, message, uh, as you come to know God, as you come to know the Him as being the way. See, that was the way that you walked in the world, that that you found out that wasn't the way. But as you examine your ways, as you reason, you came to God. So let not either, even also, as you come to God, that you begin to allow anything that you come to up up against in the church, anything that you come to in your walk. Anything that you come to in your spiritual uh, uh, state of being, analyze it. That you, uh, uh, Paul said, that you allow anything to trick you out of. He, he asked the Galatians, "What has tricked you? If you reason and you come to your reasoning in your life at any time, saying that you need something other than what you are dealing with. If you come to your life any time saying it's got to be something better than this." If God has allowed situations to bring you to your knees at any point in life, what could you come up with? What could you come up with in the body of Christ? Now, listen, we, we allow situations in the church that allow us to send us back into the world. But when you was in the world, people could basically curse you out. Y'all could get into fights, but ne the next day or the next week, you was back out there drinking with the same guys. But why are we so soft-skinned when we come when it comes to the things of God? Why is it that any little thing could drive you away from Christ? See, we don't analyze this. The enemy uses the, the smallest things to drive wedges between you and your relationship with God. But yet you don't look at it as the enemy. You look at the person or you look at people. Let us not become sidetracked or disfocused. We need to walk humbly with God. We need to know that he's the way, the truth, and the life. And no wedge, nothing should divide you between your relationship and your love walk with God.
people, uh, as I close, I desire to say that we are in the process at the My Father's House Ministry Church, a building, the build, building that we are pro, uh, in the process of building has been erected. We have the walls on the building. We are, are currently uh, uh, building the building. They're going to uh, uh, extract and put the roof on uh, this week as well. And as we continue to build this ministry, we desire that if the ministry or uh, the message that we are rendering here bless you in any type of way, that you could sow uh, cash out to the my MC, HMC. Um, and this is uh, Pastor Maggie. You could cash out this to be uh, the sowing to the ministry to sow a uh, seed, uh, a love offering. And the, the seed, we remember that when we sow seeds, it's not just for us. It's not for um, the, the church here today, but we desire that when we are sowing seeds, whether you sow in this ministry or any other ministry, we desire that when you're sowing into the true works of Christ and make sure that you're sowing into good ground, which is the true works of Christ, you know, that you that uh, you pray that the spirit will allow you to see the heart of the, 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 the uh, ministry which you're sowing in. That when you sow into good ground, it don't just bless this generation, but the many generations to come. You desire to see that seed in which you sown, that, that same seed, uh, even when you're gone, that is breaking chains, that is bringing many from the various bondages of life, that is freeing many people from various bondages, whatsoever things that they may be trapped up in, that is bringing many lives to hope and salvation. Because our hope is in nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. We desire to show people the blood, the bloodstained banner, to show people Christ as we walk out the walk, as we live what we, we say we believe in. And Father, we desire that many people see Christ through us, through our actions, through our deeds. Amen. So we pray that something was said here to bless you this afternoon. And as we come into close, we close out with prayer heavenly father we thank you for the word that was sown to the many ears that hear lord god father that we will meditate on these things that we know that we are we didn't make it this far by our own walk by our own strength by our own bootstraps so father as we think and we meditate on this word help us to humble ourselves help our words to be seasoned with salt let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in our sight for you are our strength lord god let us humbly render words of love and not that bitterness of judgment be rendered out of the same well or out of the same tongue. Let us not condemn, be so quick to condemn, but see the hope in people, see the good in people. Everybody has some type of good in them. And Father, we desire that we be able to see the good with your spirit, that we be able to be able to walk in new acts and new walks of life. And with your same love and compassion which you give us, we are able to render to others. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the, the many hearts or many uh, people that you may touch through the word. Bless your sister, uh, Kennedy, for coming on. Uh, we pray that something was said to bless someone, that you keep your hope and you keep the, uh, the, the, the humbleness in your heart that you're able to walk out this walk that we're able to show love. If we say we love Christ, we should be able to show and render love to other people. Christ loved people. As a matter of fact, he loved people so much that he died for all. Now, all may not receive that gift which Christ gave, but that don't make the gift any more less powerful than what it is. Good to see you, Sister McLam. Good to see you, Vera. But we desire to be able to humble ourselves that we may pick uh, with compassion show people Christ because people's lives need to be changed. As we say, the hospitals are church. The church is a hospital for the hurting. And when you have people that are hurting, sometimes it's hurting people that hurt people. So <laughs> let's be uh, like ducks. Let the water uh, just beat up on your back and flow off. Don't be so quick to judge. Don't be so quick to leave a church. But make sure that if you are leaving a church, you're leaving a church because God is leading you from a church. Because if God desires that you go through a situation, you can't run from it. Regardless of where you go, you're going to meet that same situation some way, somehow. There are no flunkies in his school. There are no flunkies in his classes that he gives. Amen. But he renders everything with love, with grace, and compassion that we all may grow in him. 
But Christ, uh, I, I pray that something was said in the name of God to bless you and that something was said to uh, increase your spiritual walk with him. God bless you. Share the uh, mercy and grace shine upon you and your life. In Jesus' name, God bless. Amen.